I'm excited. This will be the first time on a Wednesday work show that we will have brought in a trainer, which is great. Yeah. Oh, anytime you get to hear it directly from the trainer, that's the best. And uh, you always, I want to say he's, I don't want to say there's an argument, but maybe he's one of the hottest trainers at Santa Anita right now. The last few weeks, Phil's been just on fire, hitting on all cylinders. Um, so let's hope that that keeps uh, going into this weekend on Sunday with Carpe Vino. Yeah, absolutely. Having won three races in one day on March 21st, here is a trainer that is a multiple grade one winning trainer. In addition to one that uh, has won in excess of 600 races in his career. And uh, without further ado, let's uh, welcome in the man, the myth, the legend, uh, trainer Phil D'Amato, the trainer of uh, Carpe Diem. Phil, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in today. Um, I'm seeing that SE sweatshirt, but I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to take it for now. Yeah, this was the wrong day to wear it, but uh, you know, it is what it is. What, what can I say? Absolutely. Uh, know that you're busy, and of course, uh, you know, many as a former trainer, people seem to think that trainers have a day off, but uh, as you well know, uh, no days off in horse racing, 365 days a year. And on days like today, today, I'm sure that you're out there at the farms, kind of checking up on your stock. Am I right? Uh, that's exactly what I was doing. I was uh, barn hopping, or in farm hopping, I should say, and uh, almost made it back home, but but uh, not quite. But uh, uh, glad to be here with you guys. Well, we greatly appreciate it. And uh, once again, as the uh, My Racehorse program evolves, as we have these Wednesday work shows, proud to announce that you are the uh, first uh, trainer to uh, come on board. So, uh, the idea, Phil. Uh, obviously, you've had Carpe Venum since day one. This is a filly that's on the precipice of having earned a hundred thousand, and you know she, I thought, ran quite well in the Astra last out on January seventeenth. But before we jump into the workout, um, maybe give us uh, you know some idea on how she's training, and knowing that you're going to have a lapse of roughly, if the race were to go this weekend, a lapse of roughly ten weeks in between tries. How does that work for a trainer, and how do you keep these horses fit? You know that that's probably the hardest thing especially while you're trying to develop a filly along the way you, you know we've kind of isolated that she's I, I would say a, a marathon turf filly specialist although I think you know on the the right kind of race she could go a mile and an eighth but um, you know she she's a filly she's just getting better uh, she's putting on weight she's filling out getting stronger um, I put a long, a lot of long gallops in between these breezes, a good, uh, bunch of two mile gallops in her. So she, she's, you know, as ready as I could have her off the bench, uh, preferably I'd like to run her, you know, every five or six weeks, but, uh, it's just not the case. I think later on in the year, we'll have much more opportunity to get her on a more regular, um, you know, race cycle, but she, she's doing really well. All right, well, let's uh, let's go ahead and pull up uh, the workout that we have, and I don't know if you have the opportunity to see it, but evidently, you know, you know these works without even having watched them because you know your horse is uh, forward and back. Uh, this is a workout still from March 28th, so this is her most recent drill. Uh, I know that you had messaged me just a few moments after uh, what your thoughts were, so kind of take us through what this work was and what your intent was. Well, uh, my intent really was for her to, to breeze with uh, Majestic Steps, who's a nice uh, three-year-old filly. And the horse behind them is Earl's Rock running in the, the uh, graded stake opening day at Keeneland. And he was just kind of kind of do his own thing and use those two kind of, you know, to, to get him ready. But for, from what I like about uh, this, this filly – is that Carpe, she handled, I thought, Majestic Steps really well. And and then um, you'll you'll see on the gallop out, she just she that's where she excels. You know, she'll she'll gallop out really good. And uh, you know, I think that'll get her fit and ready to go for, for uh, this race. Nikki, you're on mute there, but uh, I'm, I'm going to hop in real quick for a question for you, Phil, just because uh, since we've talked recently about really changing up her training style of getting her going a little shorter, half mile drills, keeping her a little sharp. I mean, at least from a bystander being there really since she's first gotten to you, uh, to me, it seems like her works have 
gotten better visually uh, each and every week. And I've seen a difference in that. And I'm ultimately just what's your opinion since you've changed that up? Yeah, no, I, I think so. You know, it's kind of what you kind of want your horse to be the most comfortable doing what, what they like to do in order for you to get the best air out of them, you know, yeah. in their workouts. Um, in California at Santa Anita, we're, we're not privy to, um, you know, the grass works where I think would be optimal for her. So the, the training track in my eyes is the next best thing. And getting that, uh, just keeping her happy with short drills where she's just kind of running through the lane as good as she can. And then putting the bottom in her in between with really long gallops. That's what she likes. And, uh, you know, that's what I did going into that last stake and it, and, you know, I, I thought she, considering those fillies in that race, a bunch of older fillies uh, with a lot more experience, I, I thought she held her own pretty well. When you when you look at the works for her in general and, and for the folks, uh, the shareholders, and even the fans that may be tuning in, because this filly, she's worked essentially on the training track for nearly two years straight since you've had her in training. What is the purpose of that and, and the premise of keeping her on the training track versus working her on the main? I, she's just m much more comfortable on it. Uh, she gives me more, um, you know, and, and that's kind of what I need. Uh, when a horse is more comfortable on that surface, they'll, they'll give you more and they'll breeze. They'll gallop out further. You know, they'll get their air better. With these turf fillies, especially her, I – all I'm focusing on in, in these workouts is getting her as fit as I can get her. It's not get put in different scenarios and, and, you know, sitting her behind horses and she just not that kind of Philly. She's one that kind of, you get her fit as best you can in the morning and she'll show up in the afternoon and all these horses are different. They all have their own little, uh, you know, quirks and, and uh, things that they like and dislike, but, but, uh, having her this long and, and knowing her, I, I think uh, this is, uh, you know, the best way to, to get what we need accomplished. And Phil, lastly, or not, maybe not lastly, but uh, upcoming, hopefully uh, the race goes this Sunday. Can you just fill in everyone on what the target race is and uh, the plans leading up there? It, it, it's a mile and a quarter, two other than allowance. I think that should be a really good spot for her. Um, I'm pretty confident that race is going to go. I think that I've, I've uh, done my homework and I, I know that there's at least five horses that should enter in that race. So it gives me a good, good feeling that uh, when we enter tomorrow, we'll have a good shot of that race going on uh, Sunday. All right. We've had a couple of questions come in here and I want to put you on the spot, Phil. We can got you on camera. Uh, who will be riding Carpe Viet this Sunday? We, we have uh, Jose Valdivia. Who, who I thought did a really good job of, of kind of getting the most out of her in that stake last time. Uh, I think if that horse that was the winner waited a little bit longer to make its move, right. it would have helped Jose engage Carpe a little bit better. But I, I thought all in all, given uh, the, the race shape, Jose did a great job and, and uh, you know, gave her some confidence there. And, uh, one little tidbit about it is we also learned that that was a non Lasix event and our Philly did, did not bleed one iota, which is, which is really good to know down the road uh, when we do run in these uh, graded stake races that we'll have a Philly that, uh, you know, can eventually com compete in these races hopefully and not have to worry about her bleeding. The last question uh, from, from Chris uh, Grabowski, um, with Carpe Venum, by the way, great answer. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, as a distance specialist regarding Carpe, what tells you most in watching her train that she is a, a marathon or an elongated distance type horse? You know, you'll, she, she has tactical speed, but she doesn't have a big giant turn of foot, but she can carry that tactical speed of, uh, you know, a longer distance than most. And uh, I think that just plays into her wheelhouse. I think you've seen from the races she's won, she's always kind of done it in a dogfight scenario. And usually you, you get those scenarios the longer you go 
um, where the, the longer you go, the more you kind of uh, put at bay the, the big turn of foot horses that can come get you. So it's more of a stamina game. And I think that that really plays to her, her asset. All right, Phil. Well, we know you got to get back to work as you are uh, farm hopping, if you will, from place to place. And uh, this Wednesday has truly been a privilege to have you come on the Wednesday work show. We wish you the best of luck along with the My Race Horse Partners. And of course, Joey Platts, who has been a tremendous partner with us in Carpe Venum this Sunday. We interrupt tomorrow and uh, reports will go out to the uh, shareholders. Hopefully the race goes, she gets in and it will be all gravy from there. So thank you very much, Phil. We appreciate you. Thanks, guys. Anytime. Thanks, Phil. Phil D'Amato.